Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassal, Jason Levine, and today we're taking a look at a game called Road to Infamy. Now this is a game that I hadn't even heard about when it showed up. Had you? No, I hadn't heard yeah, about I, it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, it's, it, I'm pretty sure it's a, it's a Kickstarter. I think the front of the box says it's a Kickstarter. It's a game about um, gangsters. Uh, what you're doing in this game is you are trying to collect loot, but the police are always coming and stealing your stuff. What's wrong with these police? Let us get this stuff in peace. It's really a card playing game. It's blind bidding, I guess would be the right term, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. You're essentially playing cards face down and trying to outthink everybody else at the table. Let's take a look. Each player is going to take a gang. So you can be the hackers or the cartel or the bandits or the rebels. And players are going to get one of four different kinds of contraband. Now, one of those kinds of contraband is going to be doubles. So if you can see for the rebels, guns are worth double for them, while for the bandits, jewels are worth double for them. So you're going to start with one of each. The rest of the contraband is put into a bag. And each round of the game, you're going to draw two contraband and put them here face up. Each player is going to have a handful of bid cards. Now these cards are three different suits that match the gangster, contraband, or cop. So what players are going to do is they're going to simultaneously, each round of the game, play a card face down and reveal it. They'll then place it on their side of the board under that color. They're then going to play another card from their hand, turn it face up, and then another card from their hand and turn that one face up. Some cards have special things, like this one says, if you have a three, four, or five bit in play, move them to your contraband slot. So when I play this, I might move this over here to the contraband. This bust here says at the end of this hand, all contraband bids that are eight or more are disqualified, which would actually disqualify this one because it's a bid of nine. So the player's gonna play three cards. So at the beginning of your turn, you're able to discard one and draw one to take its place, but then you're gonna go with whatever cards you have in your hand. Now, as you play these, after you play these cards, you're, we're going to go through them one at a time. First, we're going to compare all the bids for comp. And whoever has the highest bid, by the way, if there is a tie, and ties are a lot less, uh, they're fairly rare in this game, so they don't happen that often, but there is a tie. Players will draw one of these brawl cards, and whoever draws the highest wins the tie. I would have preferred that you had turn order or something, and just whoever was closer to going last wins the tie or something like that, but whatever. Whoever wins the comp bid, is going to, first of all, the, the police are not going to be able to take a good from you. So that's a good thing. And then you get to pick what the police will take next turn. At the beginning of the game, the, the token starts here. But after, after that, it's going to be on one of these things. And after every time we, we bid to see who wins the cop, whoever has the most is free from the cop. But the cop is going to take one contraband of that type from everybody else. So if I don't have the most highest bid in cop, then I'm going to lose one of my jewels here. Then, whoever has highest bid in contraband is going to get these two tokens here. The top gangster would have been face up in this round, and whoever has the highest bid in gangster is going to get this gangster. Each gangster is going to do different things. For example, this person would just be placed here and gives you an automatic plus two whenever you bid on contraband. This bank robber says whenever you win contraband, you get an extra token from the bag. The brawler here says that you always win ties. The mob boss here, which is one of three star tokens, uh, one of those is always on the bottom of the pile. Here you get one infamy point at the end of the game for each of your gangsters. Uh, crime Lord here, plus three if you have four of the same type. Recruiter and a fugitive here. The fugitive cannot be assassinated. And so they all have different things. And the reason that assassination is thing is because there are, when the cards here, are one to five of the three different types. But the ones and twos have special abilities, like the sabotage will kill other blues of three, four, and five. Uh, the assassinate, uh, one that I mentioned before, can cause someone else to lose a gangster. Uh, you discard a gangster from an opponent that played a red bid this turn. So if someone else is trying to get a gangster, they can lose their gangster when it's assassinated. This mug, take a, con take a token from someone else who played the same color as you. So players have these here. And you're going to play those after the round is over. You will then put, put two more contraband here, put a new gangster there. Everybody will draw their hands back up, and the game will continue. And after 12 rounds, after all the gangsters have been gone through, 
and everyone's going to get points. Some of the gangsters will give points, but most of your points are going to come from the contraband you've gotten. Each contraband's worth one, except for the one in your doubling area, which are worth two each. Most contraband points, winner of the game. All right, Jason, Road to Infamy. It's a thematic game about gangsters. How strong is that theme? The theme came through pretty well with the three different areas that you're going for. So you have cops who take away and you, if you don't get the highest bid in that, you're gonna get something taken away by the cops. Then you have the, where you're stealing the loot and stealing the loot, the highest person's getting the stealing the loot. And then you have these like enforcers or people that will help you to be able to do these things better. So the theme came through pretty well, I felt in this game. Yeah, okay, so what do you think about the, I, I, I agree, it, it, it's there, it's not strong, it's, but it's a card game, what do you expect? What do you think about the luck in the game? Okay, so you have cards in your hand, and you can discard one of them and get other ones. Um, but it's obvious that a four is not as good as a five. Um, a three is not as good as a four or five, but threes can be played using a special card or whatever, and the ones and twos are all specials. But what do you think about the luck aspect? I didn't think the luck aspect was too bad. I mean, one of the things about this game that I didn't like is that you can't really go for multiple things in a turn. You have to make your choice and say, I'm only going for the red or I'm only going for the green, I'm only going for the blue. So if you know which one you want to go for in each turn, you just have to make sure you have the cards that go with that color. Because I didn't feel like you could compete in multiple things. We did play it with the full complement of four players, so maybe that... Well, one person is not going to get everything, right? So in a two-player game, you could get two things. In a three-player game, you might get two things. But in a four-player game, you're definitely not getting everything. You're right. But it's not really blind bidding. It's, 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 it's like semi-blind bidding because you're revealing this stuff as the round as goes go. by. And so you always oh, see, oh, Jason played two blue cards. Oh, okay, well, I guess he's going to win blue. But that's where I think the game does have some luck in it. Because I can sit there and go, oh, Jason went for blue? Oh, what do I do now? That's all I had. Yeah. I mean, there are times and where you literally have a lot of colors, hand, cards of one color. That's the color you have to go for. You can't be like, well, I'll save these for a future turn. I mean, you just got to do it. And if someone else is going for the same color, whoever has the better cards wins. Exactly. And then you have the randomness where there's cards that make everyone else discard their cards. So if I play a green card that says everyone who played threes, fours, and fives of greens lose their card you've now just affected a lot of the table. And those, those power cards, the ones and twos, felt a little too overpowering in that regard. Yeah, I guess. They almost felt like take that style of game. I mean, essentially one that kills gangsters. You have to work hard to get a gangster, then to just have it taken away. Another one says, you know, someone else played a card, discard it into five, or steal loot from other people. And you can say, well, you know those cards exist. You do, but you have no idea who has them and when they're going to play them. Yes. So it's almost random in that regard. Now, it may sound like I'm coming off fairly negative on the game. I'm not. Because the game is so light and entertaining that that stuff is just minor. I enjoyed trying to outthink the other people, except, again, it was just more of a casual thing. If you take this game too seriously, I don't think you'd have much fun at all. No, it's a game that you can't, because like, I liken it, and I know this is going to sound bad, but I liken it to war. I mean, it's a little more strategy than war because you get to pick your card. But it's basically war. You put down two, you, everyone puts down the card, you flip it over and you see what happens. And it didn't excite me. I, wanted, I was hoping for something a little more exciting, but I didn't feel excited by that. And I felt like there wasn't really that many choices because you're, what you have in your hand dictates what you do. You can't really say, I want to go for reds because if you only have one red card, you're not going to get reds no matter what happens. And when you play all those ones and twos, either you're gonna hit a lot of people or you're gonna hit no one, and it's very random when that happens. So the, all of those things kind of held me back. Okay, well for me, I, I agree with Jason. My biggest problem with the game is there are, um, is it 12, 12 gangsters? This game for 12 rounds just feels slightly too long. I almost should be eight or nine. Um, you're, just, you're, you're doing the same thing. It's like put a card down, flip the cards, put a card down, flip the cards, put a card down, flip the cards. Okay, now do the blah, 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 blah. Okay, do it again. And it just, that's fine. It just felt like it was a little longer than it should be. I, I, I think shortening it, which isn't hard, you just pull a couple gangsters out, would help out a lot. Um, and at the end of the game, you'll find that the scores are not, are, are likely not going to be super close. No. Because someone's going to do something at the end of the game where they get an extra thing or a gangster that suddenly gives them four extra points. But taking it as a light game, I'm okay with all this. 
I would give this an awesomeness rating of six. See, I rate this a little lower and I give it an awesomeness rating of four. To me, it just, it fell flat. And I, I was hoping there was more. It seemed good. When we played a round or two, I was like, okay, I get it. But then after playing a few rounds and seeing all of the things that I discussed, I just said, you know, it doesn't work as well as I imagined it would work. All righty. Well, I'm Tom Vassell. Jason Levine. And that's Road to Infamy. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.